love the chase and the hunt And I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now we go! Hey, welcome everyone to This Is Corbin Center And ho oh, ho, it is going to I mean like we're on the verge of something historical Which is amazing But <clears throat> First things first, I want to give a big uh, Corbinite recognition. This one is going out to the band Mall. Thank you for allowing me to use your van to get some wicked air this week and come down with an axe handle smash a la Macho Man Randy Savage on Jordan at Time Bomb. Which, let's just cut right into it. Let's go and talk about what we had. I highlighted a few things. So first things first, uh, let's talk about Time Bomb and then go back to freelance because there's some stuff that I want to do. Let's get the, let's get the little little bad part out of the way, the part where I got choked out. Uh, first of all, it, it, you know, again, this has been the second time in a month where I have had, I've been choked out by somebody or something. And uh, I, I need to tell you that when people thought that I was going to slow down, here I was getting in more and more violent matches. And I knew what was going to happen when I stepped in, uh, I can't even say stepped in the ring, when I stepped in the event center without a ring with Jordan. I knew this was going to be big. We spilled to the outside. The building couldn't even hold us. You know when every like cliche indie wrestler says, we're going to blow the roof off here. We're going to take the building out, blah, blah, blah. We literally couldn't be held in the building. We barreled to the outside. I jumped off the van. We fought back and forth. Chairs, he brought thumbtacks. And even the strongest thing in there was the door. The door that would not Break. We broke one, but we couldn't break that second one. And even later on, they tried to break it again, and it was refusing to. Now that, right there, being a, that that no one's going over on that. That was like the Hulk Hogan of doors, using creative control to not get broken, not put over, but less racist, which is pretty impressive and slightly more bald. Uh, that's how we're looking at this. But I'm not, I'm not in any way, shape, or form uh, uh, upset at my performance. I mean, again, when you get, when you pass out, that doesn't mean that you give up. That means you fought with everything. And, and you know, again, I got to give Jordan the advantage on here. But if, if, if we would have gone just a couple more minutes or if that door would have broke, it would have been different. Because I did have a very good week. I went back to freelance. I wrestled Dan the Dad. And even, even though the Emporium didn't, hasn't seen me for a long time, remember, I said this is a chance for me to get back. Back on my winning ways when I went in there and I dropped you know I was gonna say should I say drop the pipe bomb or the truth bomb because it was Chicago back in freelance because with CM Punk being fired uh, is that gonna have a bunch of maybe that will boost the algorithm I don't know but at freelance it was me knowingly fully aware sitting cross-legged dropping a pipe bomb on Sugar Dunkerton, which really propelled me into the main event picture. And I think people have forgotten about that, so I have to remind them just who I am. And I don't mind doing that. A lot of people, I think, were a little upset that I was willing to take uh, pot shots at one of their favorites, at, at, at Dan the Dad. Maybe they were mad that I cheated. I like to dub what I did is I won with the mug shot. That's right. I grabbed that coffee mug that he brings, you know, like probably number one dad, best dad that he got that was actually from, uh, from the wife uh, instead of the kids. Because, you know, the kids, they don't have money. They're just deadbeats. And then you have to write their name backwards, like spell their name backwards because it's cute and adorable. By the way, I do not like kids. One of my favorite Instagram accounts is called Kids Getting Hurt. It's my favorite thing ever. It's one of my pastimes. Subscribe to them and tell them that I sent you because that will be hilarious if you do. If I get tagged in, in comments on that Instagram that says, Darren Corbin sent me here, great page. Um, also, I'll know who is in the same boat as me, who, who likes kids getting hurt. But today it was dad getting hurt on that Thursday, and I punched him, you know, and like, and it's great. It's in the arcade. It's a very child setting. You know, you always used to ask your dad for quarters to play in those games, and now I won with a punch and a ginger snap. And actually, here's a little fun fact for you. Even though I've been winning matches, I believe that this is the first time, the first time since July 1st, that I've beaten somebody with my move. Which means, 
Remember, I've won before anyone's being like, oh, have you not won? Have you been on a losing streak? And then I would say to you, I guess if you've never paid attention to anything in your entire life or the fact that the internet exists and I post everything very willingly, the idea that you're not following, it's not my fault to educate you. I am not in, I'm, I don't have to hold your hand through this, but what I'm going to tell you is I've been winning a lot of matches without it because I'm a versatile performer and a lot of people have been studying up on the ginger snap, which makes them susceptible to losing in other ways just like Dan the dad he got with the mug and then also going to Balsam Lake uh, to wrap it out you know Labor Day weekend most people are always trying to relax they try and go to the lake the problem is is I could see the lake in the distance here's what happens I could see the lake the lake there was a dunk tank there which I'm not gonna give fans the satisfaction of dunking me but I could see it and I was sitting there and I was like you know what I could be in there because when it it's almost a hundred degrees and I go out there and run and I don't think people appreciate the risks that I take going out there. I'm wearing almost all black. I am covered because I don't want to get sunburn. I know it's important to keep my skin healthy and, and being the redhead that I am. I am fully aware, real talk, that I know that cancer is, that skin cancer is definitely a risk. Uh, and that is something that you deal with your entire life. But yet I go out there risking my life all the time with the chance, you know how many moles I've had removed? Do you, do you know how many weird like skin tags and gross I've had? Just uh, that I've had checked out that not too long ago that because our healthcare system sucks so bad that I had to go and get a dermatology appointment only to find out that I was actually okay. But by doing this dermatology appointment, I'm still paying off that medical bill that they didn't even give me the medical bill till about a year later. This is one, I mean, I can vent about this. Being a pro wrestler and having to deal with the American healthcare system, even though I had healthcare, is kind of a weird little uh, catch-22. But I digress. I made it out of this weekend unscathed with the matches that I had. And it's good that I did, because it's not that I'm concerned about bills. It's not that I'm concerned about this. What I'm having to look forward to right now is Saturday Night Nitro. I want to take a moment to actually address this in full effect. Now, you saw on Snapchat, we've talked about this, I will be at Mondo Lucha and not at FanFest. And I've had a couple people that say, boo, you're not going to be at FanFest? No, I'm not. Look, I see all the meet and greet prices and every single time that a, you know one of the pictures, one of the graphics pop up, it's always somebody that I hate. And I think back to when I lost that championship, how all these people, Effie and Devon and you know and, and Cannon are all celebrating in the ring at my expense. And people are liking these pages when they come up and liking these graphics when they come up and oh I can't wait to shell out my money to go and meet all these uh, all these people that first of all I don't think it's worth it. I don't think you're worth it. Let me just point this out. Devon not worth it. Effie, not worth it. Canon, not worth it. Definitely not worth it. And all these people are willing to spend their money because, oh goody, there's a mean grid, there's a chance to talk. And I can't think of anything that I would rather not do than make small talk with people who are like, uh, so do you think this is cool that you're doing it a second time? Ugh, give me a break. I would rather I, I at least get to warm up a little bit and take out some frustration. But no, I will not be there at FanFest. I am not contractually obligated because nobody gets to tell me where I can and cannot work. I make the choice where I want to go. I might make the choice to not do any more outdoor shows for the rest of the year just because I'm sick of them. I don't have to show up to FanFest. It's not like First Wrestling is going to... They're not going to cater to me. Where's my combo? Where's my autograph? Where's my a bite? No. Look, I did it last time because I was a champion and I represent this company. That's the deal. But the moment the championship came off me, it's almost like they don't care that I exist. And that's why it's Saturday Night Nitro. And if you're one of those fans, I'm going to remind you that I do, in fact, exist very much. And whether you think I'm a pain in the ass or a thorn in the side... I look forward to reminding you that I am indeed all those things. And when put on a huge stage at a historical event, WCW has not even run the Mall of America twice. There's been two promotions, WCW and First Wrestling. 
and only one of those promotions is going to run the Mall of America twice. And if you look back at it and you think of who made a statement, I would champion going into this. And so if you think that I'm not going to do something memorable this time around, the puppy shirt thing, that was great. Everyone always talks about Lex Luger, but only I was the one to go and find a puffy shirt and do it. I am a wrestling historian, and I'm also one of trendsetting in pop culture, and I knew exactly what people would pop for. That's what I do, and I plan on doing it again. I cannot stress the magnitude of this event. I can't stress how important something like this is to the local scene and like the idea that these are big time events. This isn't the whole deal where you put a, a curtain in front of a locker room door. This isn't the thing where you just have the outside and everyone comes out of the back of the ring truck. No, no, no. It's not one of those. It's not one of those things where the music guy can't play the correct music if his life depended on it. No, it's not that. And it's also not an event that's going to get canceled a day before because there might be a chance of rain. Uh, this one very much so is a huge event and no matter how you cut it, no matter what you want to say, it's big. So what will I end up doing? Do you think that, do you think that I just spent 10 minutes and 55 seconds building to the fact that I was going to tell you what I plan to do at the mall? No. You should have either A, got tickets, or been paying attention. You know? That's how it should have worked. When we, when I say that things are going to sell out, you should be there. When I say something's big, you should be there. And, uh, you know, again, I can't imagine. If I, even as a kid, I remember I used to make special trips to the Mall of America to get my, my video collection to build it up. So if you would have told me that there was wrestling there, I would have jumped on that opportunity. So I, it shocks me that a lot of you might not. And I get it, some of you, you know, that's a, that's a haul. But if you've ever wanted to see the Mall of America, this would have been the time. Now, if you can't make the Mall of America and I might be coming to a place near you, let's talk about my upcoming <laughs> Let's do that. First and foremost, uh, I will go back to Destination Pro, whether I'm welcome or not. And it looks like I'm going to be a part of this Battle Royal that I got to win. Uh, but I mean, I'm, a, I'm obviously the odds on favor, right? Like, I mean, I'm looking at the rest of the roster and there's nobody there that's worth a damn. So there's that. Then I go back to freelance. So I have uh, freelance as my return. Keep that winning streak alive. The last weekend in September, I am off. Uh, October, maybe the fall's going to slow down a little bit, which I could always use. October might have a nice little trip plan there. Uh, definitely going back to freelance again. Uh, I'll be returning to Battleground and then also heavy on Halloween. It is spooky season, so we'll see exactly what might happen in those cases. So I have a lot. Don't think that just because summer's done doesn't mean that I'm done. But I got a lot to focus on this weekend, so we're going to cut it right here. And you can tune in to see how everything goes on the next This Is Corbin Center. Don't be scared.